bother and hope. Hey y'all, look. Hello. I'm, I'm recording live here in the view. <laughs> to get closer to the fire, there are seats down here, and if you want to get really close, we'll put seats in the middle for you. If you're sitting in the back and you're a young person and you want to come closer, we do have seats up here available. You want to get close for this. You want to get a little closer for this if you're a young person. All right.
to those that are around me. This is the most talented and anointed and creative generation thus far, but we have been the least productive generation thus far. The enemy has been able to subdue and curve your creative geniuses through quiet, calculated movements and to cause leaders to be followers. There are creative geniuses in here tonight, but the enemy wants you to follow after someone else's genius and never come into the realization of who you really are. But the hour cometh and now it is when they that worship God will worship him in spirit and in truth because the Father seeketh such to worship him. This is the generation of worshipers. This is why it was so hard, so difficult for the man to bring us into a place of worship because the enemy is trying to curb your appetite for worshiping God because he wants us to worship the enemy. Praise God. But this is a worshiping generation. And if we could ever break free and get into the place where we worship God uninhibited, things will begin to change. You've been created to worship. You're born to worship. There is a desire inside of each and every one of you to worship God. But in the absence of knowing how to worship God, we find ourselves worshiping other things. In the absence of knowing how to lift our hands or tell God thank you, the enemy places things in the path of our worship and we subconsciously begin to worship at the feet of the culture that the enemy has placed in front of us. And he causes us, he can't make us do anything, but he causes us to worship at his feet. My assignment tonight is to identify the enemy. Understand the warfare that's coming against you. Neutralize his weapons tonight and cause you to utilize the weapons that you have. Amen. Amen. If, you, if you know you have a weapon, raise your hand. If you know you have a weapon for the kingdom of God, raise your hand. Praise God. Praise God. Everybody should have their hands raised because everybody has a weapon that can be used. First step is to identify our enemy. Anybody know who our enemy is? Satan, somebody say it again. Satan. Satan is the adversary. He is our enemy. You will see in this picture, you will hear about this a little later. He is called Baphomet. He is called the goat god Baphomet. He is the sign and symbol and signature for satanic worship. You will see that again. But he was called, Satan was called Lucifer. Son of the morning, the anointed cherub that covered. So basically saying he was over the atmosphere in heaven and he led the angelic host into worshiping and praising God. But he got lifted up in pride and he fell from grace and not just by himself, but he caused one third of the angelic hosts that were in heaven to follow him and to fall behind him. God created him to worship. His name actually means son of the morning or first sound in the morning and that he was a praiser, he was a worshiper and he led the angelic host into worshiping God. He realized he controlled the ebb and the flow of worship in heaven, got lifted up in pride and he desired the worship that he gave to God. I'm sure some of you have heard this story before. He desired to be worshipped as he was created to worship God, but he desired to give the worship that he gave to God. So he was kicked out of heaven, and when he was kicked out of heaven, his name changed from Lucifer to Satan or adversary. He was called Lucifer, son of the morning, but when he fell from grace, what made him beautiful in his worship stayed in heaven, but he fell from heaven, and now he's called our adversary. All right? He was cast out of heaven and now he's called adversary. He had the ability and capability to make melodies to the Lord, to make music. Book of Isaiah talks about he was made with vials in him, or, or he was perfect in all of his ways. And when he moved, he was creating worship to God. So he was created to worship, but he is now the abomination that's desolate because he is not doing what he was created to do. And he's been working tirelessly, tirelessly 
to cause our society to worship him and to walk around with a Luciferian complex that we desire to be worshipped when we were created to worship. And every generation has fruits of greatness with them. There are greatness, great people and great things that will come from this generation, but the enemy is fighting after the greatness that's in this generation. And if I can give you a quick recap before we get deep into the lesson. We, it will start with early Genesis when Eve encountered an enlightened being. The, uh, 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 the serpent in the Garden of Eden, he calls her to, to, to feed after something that she was not supposed to have. God told her, you can't have the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But she saw it was one desire to make her wise. And that enlightened being deceived her into partaking of that forbidden fruit. And he opened what we call now the third eye. Or, or her, she became enlightened. The third eye is not a natural eye. It just simply means that you have been opened into another sense other than what you can see with your two eyes. But she was encountered an enlightened being and her eyes were open. Then she gave to Adam and he did eat and his eyes were open. Then all the thoughts of men became wicked constantly until God brought forth a man named Noah and he built an ark and he saved his family and some of the creatures and everything else flooded behind them. Now, there were fallen angels in the world at that time. And the Bible says that the fallen angels came and had sex with the daughters of men. The, the sons of God had sex with the daughters of men and created giants in the land. They were called Nephilim, men of renown. And there were spirits that inhabited the people that were there. So when they came, they caused the thoughts and the desires of man to be evil continuously. So God flooded the whole world and everything that wasn't in his will, including the bodies of those Nephilim spirits that they inhabited. But the thoughts and the ways of man remained wicked when they started reproducing and calling upon the name of the Lord that the thoughts of the men stayed wicked and evil in their endeavors until we got to the place where we had a person called Nimrod. Nimrod shook his fist at God and tried to build a tower up into heaven not to reach God but to bring earth to heaven. He wasn't thinking about praising and worshiping God, but he wanted to galvanize the people under his leadership to reach up to heaven until God had to confound the language. And these are the earliest recorded thoughts of the enemy trying to take worship out of the earth. Are you following me? And if we were to go deeper, we'll find accounts in the book of Daniel to where he used music to try to get people to worship him. And Daniel refused to worship. And he, because he refused to worship at the king's command, he found persecution coming his way. In this day and time now, the enemy's playing a melody. Thank you. The enemy's playing a melody in the world through hip-hop music and through R&B and through the culture. And those that dare to be a Daniel and stand against what the melody that the enemy is playing, you can just believe persecution will come. But if God be for you, who can be against you? You see, God wants somebody that's willing to step up and stand out against what the enemy is doing. But it's hard to fight something you like. Uh, it's hard to fight against something you love. It's hard to say, I'm not going to listen to that music when the beat drops and the beat grabs you before you even heard a lyric that has been played. You see, music is the method that the enemy uses to distract you from worship. So the enemy came up with this plot. We're going to fast forward to the 50s. To where he wanted signs and symbols of worship. So he brought forth rock and roll music. And you will find the devil is all up in rock and roll music. Anybody know what ACDC stands for? Antichrist Devil's Children. That was a rock group that got started in that age, and we find Marilyn Manson and others. And what they would do, they would be on stage, and they were possessed by devils, and they would bite the head off of rats, and they would slam dance 
dancing to each other and destroy guitars and jump off the stage and they would do crazy things because the enemy needed a sign that he was being worshipped. This was just a test there to see if he could really control God's creation in such a way that others would follow him. But it wasn't widespread enough. Because some people are just, I say, I just, I, I, I like the music, but I'm not biting the head on no rat. I'm not slab dancing into somebody else. And the music was not appealing enough to infect the whole world. So he upped the ante in the 70s and he started with groups like Earth, Wind, and Fire. Praise God. Some of the older people said, I thought you were going to be in the young people record collection. But the head of the group of Earth, Wind, and Fire, Maurice White, took a pilgrimage to Egypt and learned Egyptian mythology and he wanted to bring that back to the group so the songs that the group wrote would have notoriety and have fame even in the house of God. If you would look at every single album cover that Earth, Wind, and Fire made, it was veiled with Greek and Egyptian mythology and signs and symbols. He did an interview and told the interviewer the way he got his songs was he went into a trance and he channeled Egyptian gods to bring forth the music that he made. And you will find that music is still popular even today. The music is so popular, somebody in here in their feelings right now. Because I said something about earth, wind, and fire. But you will find musicians play earth, wind, and fire's chords in the worship service because they know nobody else realizes they're playing a, a, a worldly chord in God's house. Christian artists are sampling their music, not really knowing, recognizing, or understanding that music was inspired by a demonic channel. And holy and fame cannot be mixed together or else God won't be in the mix. So whenever we begin to play the devil's music in church, if he put his hand on it, it's the devil's music. If he made the beat, I don't care if you say Jesus a hundred times, that's the devil's music. Every song that says Jesus is not necessarily gospel. So we find that even a, a gospel artists began to sample the music of groups like Earth, Wind, and Fire, and the Temptations, Hell, Heaven, and the Blue Notes, Al Green. Praise God. Amen. Let, let the church say amen. Amen. Let the church say amen again. Praise God. Turn to your neighbor and say, you need to move on. You need to move on. This, this is supposed to be a hip-hop session. Bless God. But I can't stop with the hip-hop music without letting you know it started before the rappers came. The enemy was in the music before these rappers came on the scene. Bless God. Hip-hop is a type of music. It's also a culture. It's also a charter religion. Amen. You can Google it if you don't believe me. They have a charter to say that hip-hop is a religion. They borrow their teachings from the 5% nation of Islam to what they call the men gods and the women goddesses. They don't believe in the most high God. They believe every man is God. Okay? It's a cultural movement started in the 70s in the ghetto, but it has spread worldwide. There is hip-hop music in Asia. They play hip-hop music in China. They play hip-hop music in Russia. It's worldwide, this music. So the enemy finally found what he was looking for to cause many to sound like one. The founder of hip-hop was a guy named Africa Bombada. He went to Africa and learned the ways of the Amazulu and the aura of Pharaoh. And he wanted to teach the men back home that man is God. So he came back and he got with a guy called Scott LaRock and KRS-One. And they formed what is now called hip-hop music. But he wanted to teach what he learned over by the Amazulu to the people here. But he realized back then that black folk didn't read. Praise God. Some of us still don't read today. 
Amen. Did you not know that reading is, let me side note real quick, reading is fundamental. The enemy can feed you anything if you don't read it for yourself. All right? There's nothing like having knowledge for yourself. So every now and then you've got to pick up your own Bible and read, even after the preacher has taken the text for that day. Amen? But he knew that black folk in particular just wouldn't read. So he said, i got to try to teach them that what I learned. But if I put it in a book, they'll never know it because they won't read the book. But he also learned that the African tribal people were emotional and they did everything to a rhythm. Oh my God. They did everything to a beat. So he said, if I can put the message in a beat, then they will learn what it is I'm trying to I'm trying to feed them, okay? And this is the this is the avenue and the method that the enemy is using to input his music in our ears. KRS1 speaks. On the followers of hip hop, he said, There are no gods or goddesses. We are gods and goddesses. We say to each other, Peace, God, peace, goddess. This concept was lent to us by the 5% nation of the gods on earth. However, they introduced themselves as gods of earth, women of earth, men gods in hip hop, because of the 5% nation is so close to the building of our philosophy. We greet each other, Peace, God, but we greet our women as goddesses. Listen to this. This is a quote that he made before he published what is called the Hip Hop Bible. They have an actual Bible, the Gospel of Hip Hop. He said, be God. Stop worshiping God. Be God. If your religion is Islam, eliminate the distance. Stop worshiping Allah and be Allah. If your religion is Judaism, stop studying the five books of Moses and be the law, be Moses. When it came to Christianity, he went a step further. He said, if you're a Christian, stop worshiping Jesus Christ and calling his name out. Be Jesus. Did you see that? He said, stop calling his name out. Because even KRS-One realized there's power in the name of Jesus. He called him over. Even he realized, he didn't just say stop worshiping Jesus. He said stop worshiping him and calling out his name because every time you call out the name of Jesus, the devil's knees get weak. Every time you call out on the name of Jesus, he begins to scatter out of your life. So he said, don't, don't stop. Don't just stop worshiping him. Stop calling his name. And he's working tirelessly to take the name of Jesus out of our young people's lips. So you ought to make the devil a lie right now. Just somebody just say Jesus. Jesus. Come on, say it like you mean it. Say Jesus. Jesus. Come on, say oh Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hey God. He realized there's power in the name of Jesus. You don't even have to know what you're going through. You don't have to understand what you're going through. You just have to understand how to call Jesus. And you shouldn't be embarrassed for calling Jesus. You can go call your brother, don't call your sister. Just sit up in your little corner and say, Jesus. Oh, Lord, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. And if you call on his name enough times, you'll really get to believe in his power. And if you call his name enough times, you'll believe that he can help. I want to suppose I'm supposed to be preaching. He, let, let me show you. Let me show you something. This is mm, trying to be good. Listen, listen to what he has to say. This is right here, the uh, gospel of hip hop. These words, look, I just wanted to say. Remember, the universe is exact. There are no mistakes. You are hearing this word now because it is time for you to hear this word. I just want to know this word. I don't want to know this word. I don't want to understand that. Listen, look. You are hearing this word now because it's time for you to hear this word now. You are the light of your world. You 
He just quoted out of the gospel of hip hop, out of the hip hop Bible. He says, your power is God, and it's time to start being God. And if you notice at the end, he looked up. See, even he acknowledged <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh my God, okay. God will take even the worst false prophet and have them acknowledge him while they are prophets. He didn't realize he did that. He just finished proper line and then he looked back at God and said, Oh, don't, don't strike me. Okay, okay. Take me, but it's not just music. It's not just music. It's not just music. It's not, it's not, it's not just music. What most people don't understand is the power of music. Music creates an atmosphere of worship. You become subject to the atmosphere you set by the music you expose yourself to. Music creates a direct link into the heart of a person. It stimulates and uses both sides of the brain. Music is one of the only entities that can go inside of your brain and interfere with your conscious and subconscious mind without your permission. Have you ever been in Walmart and you said, I ain't getting no shopping cart today. And then about five, ten minutes into your shopping, you got both hands full and you sit in your bank back, oh, get me a shopping cart. You ever been on an elevator and heard that music playing at such a low decibel and for the rest of the day you were humming that tune you heard in the elevator? Has somebody ever walked by you singing a song and five minutes later you were singing the same tune that... Because music has the power to confound both sides of the brain and interrupt your thoughts without you even giving it permission to do so. Okay. I'm going to play a little bit of this. And if you know the song, I want you to sing it with me. I used to do this. Let me do this first. Let me do this to show you, show you the power of, of, of music and the power of a jingle, praise God. I'm going to start a song, and if you know the song, I want you to finish it. All right? Y'all yeah, play that with me real quick. The best part of waking up Nationwide, on your side. <laughs> Which one of y'all bought the Folgers CD? <laughs> but you heard the jingle. And that jingle stayed with you. That Folgers commercial has got to be 20, 30 years old. Music is so powerful that most of us learn our ABCs by. You ask a child to say the ABCs without music. A, B, D, G, don't want to say it. But music has so much power. They have CDs that teach you how to learn another language. You just put the music in your ears and go to sleep with it in your ears, and you wake up knowing more of the language than you did when you went to sleep. So there's power in music. There's more power in God's music. So I'm going to play a little bit of this song, and if you know the melody, I want you to sing this song, all right? And then there's a method to the madness. I want you to sing it like you mean it, if you really know it. Wow. He's intentional. Never failing. Oh, 
did you not know you were just singing scripture? Romans 8, 28, for all things work together for the good of them that, to those who are called according to his purpose. So just by singing that little bit, you spoke life into whatever you're going through right now. <laughs> just by singing that little melody, you just spoke power and the word of God into your situation. And guess what? God's word is 100% accurate and will never return to him without accomplishing that which he sent it out to do. So all things are going to start to work together for your good. Because your God is intentional. Um, he, he's in, okay. Okay, let me move on. I got a few more minutes. Music is not confounded to the boundaries of interpretation and language. It can go into your mind. We just spoke about these things. And it can teach you things you don't even want to learn. This is why advertisers will pay upwards of $2 million for 15, 30-second slots at prime time that they can play their jingle into your listening, to your hearing. That's why in the Super Bowl, that's why they have the most viewers during the Super Bowl. They will pay the highest amount of money just to play a 30-second commercial in the Super Bowl area because they know the power of music. According to studies, music bonds to the same receptors as heroin or opium. The same activity that heroin and opium stimulates, music stimulates those same places. So when someone is, who said that? Very good, very good. So, so when music goes in and they start to measure the activity of the brain, it's stimulating the same portion as someone who just took a hit of heroin or opium. So the same way you get addicted to those drugs, you can get addicted to music in the same way. Did you ever wonder why in the club the music is so loud? The bass is so heavy. You ever wonder why the lights are turned down in the club? To numb your reception and to cause you to take whatever the enemy is giving to you. That, that, that the frequency of the bass in the club is disturbing your capability to reason. Mm. The bass is so heavy until you feel some kind of way. And it always precludes a club experience with something you heard on the radio weeks or months before. So when your song comes on, what you say? Oh, that's my jam. <laughs> Amen. I hear somebody saying, Pastor, move on. Pastor, move on. But the music confounds you. And I'll show you in a minute because what they're playing now, the guys got something called mumble rap. They're not even saying anything, but they get the producers to produce the best beat because they know if, if the beat is hitting, if the beat is like that, I don't really have to do anything but get up there and da 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 And they got a hit record just like, just like that. Okay, y'all don't believe me. Music, medicine in the music. That's why the beat grabs you before you even hear the message. Anybody ever heard a song and before you even knew what they were saying, you thought the beat was tight? You like the song because of the beat. Come on, y'all can talk to me. Y'all can talk to me. Y'all can This is a, the, 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 the people, the, the, the grown-ups behind you, they're not going to say anything because I just went in their record collection. And if they smile too hard, I'll do a rewind and go back. So y'all can talk to me. We like music before we even know what the artist is saying. Because the beat is tight. The beat captures our attention. And then we go back and listen to it again to hear what they're even talking about. Okay. But that's dangerous because the spirit of the musician will follow his melody. Let me show you something in the word of God. The spirit of that beat maker follows that beat. That's why Christian artists should not, should not use secular beat makers to make their music. 1 Samuel 16 and 23. I grabbed the Bible with the smallest print ever. Woo. Bless God. Should have brought my lowest print. 
First time we're 16 for a whole year. <laughs> and it was so. Whenever the Spirit of God was upon Saul, the Spirit from God was upon Saul, David would take a harp and play it with his hand. Then Saul would become refreshed and well, and the distressing spirit would depart from him. Oh my goodness. David simply just played the harp. And the distressing spirit of Saul had to leave because the spirit of David followed his music. So he essentially played the devil out of Saul. But God showed me just like you can play the devil out of somebody, you can play the devil. When these secular artists have prayed over the for their music for influence, when they pray over those beats that they have influence, when they have gone into seances and chants and channeling demonic spirits so they can have popular music, when you are listening to that music, you are channeling that spirit into your house. That's why it's dangerous for children to fall asleep with the iPods playing. And all night long, you got the devil pumping into your room and pumping, and you wonder why they're acting some kind of way because they spend all night subconsciously worshiping at the devil's feet. And then they come to church on Sunday, and then the praise team got to sing 25 songs to get them to lift one hand because it's all for them to worship on Sunday because they've been worshiping the devil all week long. And gospel don't sound like something they want. So they sit in church and falling asleep and texting one another and dating in church and doing everything but listening because they've been worshiping at the devil's feet all week and some of us adults are responsible, directly responsible because we got the checkbooks and we got the credit cards and we go buy them what they want because we don't want to parent them, we want to friend them. So we buy them but just, as long as it keeps them in the room, as long as it keeps them out of our hair, as long as it keeps them out of our we give them whatever they want and then get mad at them because they act some kind of way, but we're friendly. They don't have a job. Where are they getting it from? Where are they getting it from? And we are responsible for the state of the union. We are responsible for the state of our young people. Because they're not going out buying it because they don't have a job. We are going out buying them Rockefeller and Fubu and Sean John. We are going out buying them $200 Jordans by we're wearing $25 penny loafers. We are borrowing from our light bill money to take care of them with something they don't need, something they just want. So don't get mad at your child when they're acting like you. Don't get mad at your child when they're acting like the music that they listen. Don't get mad at them. You want to, every now and then you want to do a, a praise check in your house. I got, I got what I call a praise check in my house. That, that my kid, my kid, they don't like to lock the door, but if they did lock the door, every now and then I feel big, bad, and bold. I kick that door in. I start flipping over mattresses. I start looking on the television. I go on the phone and there's a rock on the phone. I
God, the Creator, the Most High. But the power exists. Some people, they don't like to admit that power exists, or they just don't believe it. They're atheists, you know what I mean? But me personally, I know there's a high power, and you know that power is real. That power is like, it's one force, right? It's one God force on this planet. And we are given free will to do what we want with that power. You can use that power for good, and then you can use that power for evil too. But there's only one power. You know, so when people say the God and the devil, you know, there's only one. But you can use that force for bad. That's what these people are playing with. They're playing with that energy that exists out here that we all have access to. Prodigy, what's going on, man? Okay. Good to see you. You know, you asked me to come here and make sure we're going to have this talk. But where are we right now, man? Can you tell us where we're at? Can we say it? Yeah, actually, um, a friend of mine, Cynthia, she does this, these immersive plays. I'm actually a part of one and we're working on another one. But the original one that we worked on, and it's called the Illuminati Ball. And we actually do it here in the house. House. Basically, yeah. I want to take it all the way back to the beginning. Um, 1995 was the first time I ever heard about the Illuminati. It was in the verse. You were on LL Cool J's I Shots with the Mix. And you said, Illuminati on my mind, soul, and my body. I don't know if we all know what you meant at the time, but I know it started the trend where then every rapper started using Illuminati in his rhymes. Listen to me. you, when you first wrote that lyric, what was going on in your head? What was the message you were really trying to convey? You know, I grew up in Long Island until I was like 12. You know, I moved coins and moved left, right? But in Long Island, they had the gods and the earths, you know, like the Five Percent Nation, the Nation of Islam. It's not the same thing, but affiliated in, in a way. It always it like it was intriguing to me because they were out there hustling and doing anything, but at the same time, they had a lot of knowledge. I had a group of friends in school, and we were all interested in this information. And we were actually cut out of school to go to the library because we realized that school wasn't teaching us about the, the history of our culture and our people. I had gone to see some other books that these Muslim brothers used to sell on the streets. The author was Dr. Malakazi Yo. His books just opened my eyes even wider. Simple things like when you say amen after you pray, like where does that come from? Like the origin of the Bible the origin of the Quran. And I came across the word Illuminati. I wanted to put what I was learning into the music, but I didn't want to turn the fans off. So I decided to like plant seeds. People are not gonna understand what I'm talking about yet, but it's gonna make them curious. About a year later, after you hear what he said? He learned all of these teachings and he wanted to put it in the music. But he didn't want to turn the fans off, so he said, I just planted seeds. He put little verses here and there so that he can create a thirst for what he was saying. And before he died, he had his last album called The Hegelian Dialectic, The Book of Revelation. In his own words, this was the culmination of what he had been doing all these years prior to have this type of conversation in this album. The album is out. He's gone, but the album is out, and all of the things that he was dropping seeds about are in that album. The Illuminati teaching, the teaching of the 5% nation, all of those things, he was dropping seeds until he thought that the people could get to a place where he could have a full-blown conversation through the music. And that's where we have this album. Praise God. Don't go download it. Don't go listen to it. Because you become subject to the atmosphere you set when you listen to the music. Praise God. Before I start studying for this to present it to you, I pray to God for covering because I got to go deep. I can't tell you what they're saying if I don't know what they're saying. So I got to go deep and I've got to listen and I've got to watch the interviews and look at what they're doing so I can bring you a relevant word about what they're doing so you don't have to go find out for yourself. Because I'm called to this. He called me to do this, to go in deep and to be able to regurgitate without being taken under by the influence of this culture. I'll tell you before I go any further, there was no one any more embedded in the culture than Dwayne Shy. My favorite artist was Tupac Shakur. 
I knew his birthday, I knew his weight, I knew his size, every tat he had, I knew his lyrics, I knew everything about Brother Shakur. And I was deeply embedded in this hip hop culture. So what I tell you, I tell you by experience, because I was deep into it. That brother had me thinking I was a thug. Yeah, you talking about thug life. Then I go home to both parents in the house with a curfew. <laughs> well, while I was in the streets, I was a thug, baby. I sat, I kept walking around like I was going to do something. If something happened, I'd go run it to my daddy. <laughs> but <laughs> this is the influence that the music has on young people. I have them thinking something that they're really not, first of what are rituals? Rituals, you are seeing rituals more than you realize or recognize. It's a religious or solemn ceremony consisting of a series of actions performed according to a prescribed order. Rituals summon spirits, specific spirits depending on the ritual performed and they come for a purpose. They come for a purpose. It's possible to summon spirits without even knowing that the ritual performed will summon the spirit. And that's the different ways that rituals can be performed. That is Nicki Minaj at the VMAs last year. Uh, was either last year or 15. That's Nicki Minaj at the VMAs and that is a ceremony she's performing. She sung a song, but she's actually performing a ceremony in the sight of everyone in the audience and everyone that watched it on television. I've seen Madonna perform Masonic rituals in the VMAs. I've seen Katy Perry levitate in the VMAs. I've seen Kendrick Lamar and Beyonce dance through what seemed to be fire in the VMAs and they were doing what they were doing demonic rituals in the song. So as you sing the song, you are partaking in that ritual. Yes you are. As you sing the song watching those demonic things going on, you become a partaker in that particular ritual that they have going on at that time. And what they're doing, they are serenading spirits. They're serenading them, showing them how much they love and appreciate them for the notoriety that they gave them. Serenade is a complimentary performance of vocal or instrumental music in the open air at night by a lover under the window to his lady. So you will find that there are a lot of these songs, especially the R&B songs, that seem like it could be talking about a woman or it could be talking about a thing. Those are serenades. And they're serenading those demonic spirits. And when you are singing that music, you are partaking in that ritual and that serenade. I got to move. I got to move. I got somewhere I need to be. Okay. Taking the music of a song with the message that was negative and trying to change the message to positive is impossible. Somebody says it's impossible. impossible. Because your brain has already accepted the song's first message. Your mind has mind stamped the song's frequencies and related them to the original message. It is impossible to change the stamp of the song. Even though you sing new words with your mouth, your body and chemicals have recorded the music and thus the original message is still prevalent in your mind. Does that make sense? When you remake a song that was already made for the world and put Jesus on it, your mind still remembers the stamp. Uh, I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to get all the way out of the way. Uh-oh. Uh, so the devil is alive. Anybody know what that song is? Yeah. By who? Yeah. Who that sing? Y'all feel like worshiping. 
from Carriers One and Boogie Down Productions, one, two, and three. He remade the song, but he couldn't even worship. How many dances, worldly dances, did he do? He did a leg leg, a drop, the, the hit the folk, the dab. He did every world like that. Did you feel like worshiping? Did you feel like it's a nice song? You felt like bouncing. You cannot remake a secular song and call the name Jesus and expect it to be gospel. All right. Set that set that's my simple point. That's my simply my point in showing you those videos. Give me ten more minutes, and I'm gonna bring this to a close, and we're gonna. It's been cool. It's not cool to devil worship. So let me take you on a journey real quick. The man called Alester Crowley. He has been coined the wickedest man alive. He is the father of modern day Satanism. He embodied and taught the phrase, do as thou wilt. He embodied the phrase, do as thou wilt. He was born in 1875. He died in 1947. But he embodied the phrase, do as thou wilt. And he was totally against God and Jesus Christ. He was a foremost Satanist of his modern era. He made no bones about the fact that he served Satan. He was, and he was evil and his own mother called him the beast. He called himself regularly by the name and the number 666. He founded the religious philosophy Talima, which enforced the idealist libertine rule of do what thou wilt. The British press named him the most, the wickedest man in the world. If you see right there, that's Brother Jay-Z. He has a hoodie on. This is an interview he did, and he has a hoodie on that says, Do as thou wilt. Ascribing to the teachings and the philosophy of Aleister Crowley. Uh, if you see that young lady to the side of him, that's Lady Gaga. Paid homage to Alester Crowley through her image. She made her hair look like his hat and she covered her mouth. It was covering the side of his mouth. She covered the front of her mouth because she was paying homage to her teacher. Alester Crowley taught black magic. He taught uh, 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 how to perform rituals and to do magic. And he also taught back masking. In one of his books, he taught uh, to walk backwards and to speak backwards and to be able to sing backwards. So, so when we saw Michael Jackson doing the moonwalk, he was ascribing to a teaching of a Lester Crowley. When, when, when a, a song is played backwards and there is a message, when the song is played backwards, it's because they dabbled in black magic and they've learned how to sing a song forward, but also have a message that is playing when the song is being played in reverse. Praise God. Now, if I were to tell you the amount of artists that have reverse lyrics in their song, one of the most famous songs that I think my daughter even liked this song until I showed her was the song Hello. If you play that song backwards, she is singing a serenade, oh my God, to Lucifer. Every other song Beyonce makes has a backward message in it. Katy Perry. They all have back and, and it's not it's not something, it's not in every record. These records are chosen, they're picked out, and when you play them, there is a message, and most of them they're serenading the enemy. So while you're singing the song forward, subconsciously you're singing the same message backwards. That is the danger embedded. He can't come out and make you worship him. So he causes you to worship him in quiet, calculated movements through the music. This is Kanye Crazy West. Oh, I said it out loud. It's Kanye West. Paying homage to a Lester Crowley. Paying homage. And, and they're not just doing this. They have actually ascribed to this man's teachings. Okay, fast forward. Anton Levy is the founder of modern day Satanism. The Church of Satan was founded by Anton Levy. And I, I skip all this to show you that. What is he doing? I 
thought Jay Z made that up. Jay Z didn't make up the pyramid above the eye. So he had to get it from somewhere. And they believe in his teachings in the Satanic Bible, you can channel spirits by opening your third eye vision through a pyramid. Pyramid meaning Egyptian mythology, the third eye meaning the enlightened ones. Illuminati simply means enlightened. But let me calm your nerves. Jay-Z is not in the Illuminati. The Illuminati is a bunch of rich folks, bankers, that meet quietly somewhere in the Bilderberg or somewhere all where you don't really know it. They plan society. But they use pawns like rappers and singers to further their message. So Jay-Z is not in the Illuminati and Beyonce is not the queen of the Illuminati. They ain't standing there. But they are passing the Illuminati message forward through causing all great and small, rich and poor, bond or free, to worship the enemy and the mark of the beast and the number in his name. Every concert he has, they tell him, throw your hands up. I'm Jehovah God MC. They're worshiping him. When he tells them to throw up the pyramid in your third eye, everyone in there is channeling spirits into that auditorium because he told them to. Okay. Okay. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. This is a billboard. I found this doing research online. I think this is in Texas. This is an after-school program, and if you don't know, that signia is the goat head god Baphomet, and that's the sign of the Church of Satan. That sign is their sigil, their image on the Church of Satan. And this is an after-school program. If you can read the words under that sign, it says the Satanic Temple. Right there, the Satanic Temple. Never be hit in school again. Exercise your religious rights. Protect children protectchildrenproject.com even have a website for you to go to. They have an after school program and I'm sure they're teaching them more than just being bullied. Do you guys see the gravity of what I'm saying to you? Okay, okay. And this is what I was telling you. That's one of Jay Z's concerts. Everybody I can see in that picture has got the pyramid up. Everybody I can see that it's got the pyramid up. So everyone in there has channeled some type of spirit out of the spirit realm into the physical realm by their actions. There's the goat head God, Baphomet again. Baphomet is the universal symbol of Satanism. He is worshipped by Satanists. He is half goat, half man, half male, half female. Baphomet is featured on the signal of the Church of Satan and is recognized as the symbol of Satan here on the earth. Baphomet is an enigmatic goat-headed figure found in several instances in history of occults, from the Knights of Templar of the Middle Ages, and is featured in the ceremonial raising of the third degree Master Mason and on the 19th century of modern currents of occultism. And I say that because I am a 32nd degree Mason. I don't knock Masons, I don't talk about them, I don't dig into what it is, but I tell you this because I've been there. I was raised to the third degree when the goat actually appeared in the ceremony. At church, amen. Yeah. Madonna paying homage to Baphomet at the VMAs in 15. They're lifting her up in what resembles some type of ceremony. And all of those under her are goat head gods resembling Baphomet. Uh, that is Bay. Beyonce, that is. With the bicycle handle with the goat head god Baphomet embedded in the insignia. And if you look on the top, there's another head. There's the head, goat head, and there's another one on the top. And she also wears a ring with Baphomet as the insignia on it. Okay, I'm almost there. 
There are many signs of worship and marks of satanic worship. The enemy always requires a sign. Yeah, this is a good place. When you see people throwing up this, this is not peace. According to the handbook of the Satanists and the uh, uh, witchcraft, this means they're sending a sign that this is bafflement. So whenever you see artists and singers throwing this up, they're showing that they are worshiping. He always requires a sign that he's being worshipped. He also requires a sacrifice that he's being worshipped. But we won't go there tonight. When you see somebody doing this, they're showing a sign that he's being worshipped. They're showing that they are the illuminated ones by showing this is the third eye vision. But this hand signal also is the hand sign for six, six, six. The devil always requires a sign and a sacrifice. You'll never see anyone in prominence and stature in the hip hop culture or in this industry unless they have given up something. There had to be some sacrifice for them to be where they are. The devil always requires sacrifice and a sign. They'll always throw them up. And it'll be right in your face and you won't even know what they're doing. I guarantee you after the night, you'll see every time somebody throws this up. You'll see every time somebody does this. You'll see every time somebody does this because I woke you up to the fact that there's a war going on out there. I bought these shopping today and you will see the eye of Horace on these innocent shirts. I bought them in Ross. I bought this water before I even left home. Tell me what you see. This is bottled water. Yes. The all-seeing eye with 666 on bottled water. On bottled water. It's on the monster bottle as well. 666, the, 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 the Greek symbol. Everywhere you go, you will see these signs. Because the enemy has upped his game. He, 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 he's no longer hiding the fact that he is in the earth realm trying to set up a new world order and a new religion and establish himself as the king of this world. So now he's coming outright showing you the bottled water. Bottled water. It's life water. And I promise not to drink this water until I showed you. I'm drinking this water. I paid $2 for this water. I'm drinking this water. I'm drinking this water. I'm covered by the blood. I just wanted to show you what's on the outside. My roots run deeper than any root the enemy can put on me. If I get thirsty, I'm going to drink this water and I'm going to use this for another prop another time. But I wanted to show you the enemy is everywhere. Anywhere you can be. Yeah, I put some tap on it and we seal it. Okay, I got, to, I got to close. I got to close. My time is up for tonight. I got to close. Okay, we'll leave it right here. I'll close. I'll close it right here. Praise God. I didn't want to bother too much of your time. Praise God. If you want the rest, I'm, tomorrow morning we're going to finish. We're going to finish this lesson. I wanted to, I want to, I want to, uh, Crescendo right there because there's something, something I want to do. The Lord was after something. You can pass these on. These are pictures right there in Half Rock. Sir. I didn't even get to the sensitive part. If you come back tomorrow, we're going to talk about this fatherless generation. We're going to talk about prison being a business. We're going to talk about pornography and depression and anxiety, suicidal tendencies, soul ties. We're going to get into the soul of the matter. But I had to crack the seal 
on this lesson tonight. I took my time a little bit. Didn't get to where I needed to be, but I took my time. I think I got what I needed to say in it. Bless God. So if you don't mind, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Go on to you. And I'm going to open up this altar. I'm going to open up this altar. I'm not going to lay hands on anybody. I'm not going to pull out any oil. Praise God. But this is a real talk altar call here. There is no age limit on this altar call. There are no titles attached to this altar call. But I'm going to open this altar like this. If something I said to you tonight prick you in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit, and you know you done got bamboozled, you got caught up into something you really didn't know, recognize, or understand what it was, I want you to make your way down to this altar, and we're going to pray that God releases you. Come down. If what I say spoke to you, I want you to come down to this altar. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. I want you to come. Y'all don't look around. This is not time to look around. That, that person beside you wants to come too. They want to come too. I want you to come down to this altar. Y'all know what you, you know what you're into. You know what's really going on. 